We are expecting a call at some point, at his leisure, from Tom Jawbone. He's with the Cold River Ranters. And while we're waiting, I'm going to play one of the songs off their latest CD. Uh, It's called Watershed. I'm going to play We're All In It Together. We're all in it together. We're all in it together. Oh, we're all in it together Whenever we change the weather Oh, we're all in it together Oh, we're all in it together Oh, we're all in it together Whenever we change the weather Well, the big boys give us a poison pie The big boys give us a poison pie Boys give us a poison pie. We push the button, put it up in the sky, cause we're all in it together. We're all in it together. We're all in it together. Whenever we change the together hey phone's ringing let's do a little radio verite listen to me take this call black shape radio tom i'm gonna i'm gonna flip you into the console we'll go on the air okay it might sound like i hung up but i didn't (laughs) yow (laughs) tom yes let's promo the thing at hand what do you what's going on well it's a fundraiser that we're doing at molehill theater it kind of all fits really well, uh, a permaculture fundraiser and Molehill Theater and this band, and it's on March 18th. And um, we're going to be playing an all-acoustic set. That's the way we play. We play without amplification. So for people who don't know, people who haven't seen the band, 
how do you describe it? Because I run into problems. <laughs> yeah, there is a problem with <laughs> describing the band because of the lack of a category uh, that you can come up with. We call ourselves Hot Gonzo Primitive Jive Music, and that's about as best as we can do. It's kind of folk music. It's upbeat. It's high up tempo. It's up um, uh, kind of power acoustic music, but it is completely non-electric. Um, but we all sing loud and play loud and play it with a lot of energy. And other than that, it's a little bit hard to, you know, put a tag on it because kind of tr- traditional music based. But when you say that, it's sort of traditional music from everywhere. Um, and there's a really diversity. Even f- there's just four people in the band, but everybody brings something really different to the band. I have my background. I do a lot of the singing, but we do have four singers in the band. Um, I do a lot of the singing, and uh, my sort of background in that is old-timey music from Appalachians and all oh, Delta Blues music, but also I play French dance music, French folk dance music, and I've played music from Africa and from India, and all that stuff gets included in the band, and then we haven't even gotten to the other people in the band yet. Um, <laughs> There's uh, Merrick Bennett. He's he's kind of the newest member of the band. He's been with us for a couple of years now, and he brings a whole bunch of stuff. He has Slovakian ancestry, and mm. we some of the first stuff he brought to the band was Slovak music, folk music, and but he also has researched and has a performing Civil War music band. So he does Civil War era music, and he's also a really good songwriter. And yeah. I'm a songwriter as well, so we do a lot of original stuff. Eric Walker is brings a more contemporary touch to it, sort of uh, very much influenced by Neil Young and John Prine and Van Morrison, and uh, also he's a songwriter, and his brother's a songwriter, and we bring some of his brother's, song, brother's songs in, mm-hmm. too. So there's all these influences, and my wife, Anita, she's been an accordion player. She's been in a lot of different kind of folk bands, and we've been, her and I, we've actually been playing together just about 30 years, uh, and started out playing um well she, she was in one band and i was another but we were playing similar kind of uh, american roots music and um so yeah we we, we don't want to be pinned down really that's kind of the <laughs> long and short of it we want to do you no know, the songs that are good i a long time ago i, I thought maybe i'd want to be in a cajun band which i would have loved to at the time and then i thought of well what would i have to leave behind if i did that all the other stuff so there's just um no need to leave it behind. There's a common thread in all of folk music. It's a lot of it's dance based, and that's kind of us too. We have that beat, that drive, that dance, but we also have the kind of ballad end of it, where you know the singing songs that uh, hit the heart of people. Yeah. And uh, so, there's no need to limit yourself other than to those two things. I think dance music and songs that sing to the heart. So yeah, that, that was a lot of words, and I'm not sure we're any closer. I <laughs> know we're probably further away. That's what <laughs> that's what you get with the Coal River Ranchers. You get a little bit further away. The only thing I can say is, people always note when they see us. They say, "Yeah, this stuff comes from all over the place, but you have this sound. This sound is only yours. This is a particular sound that belongs to you, and sort of that sound is part of all of it." Mm-hmm. So. Uh, there's that's the cohesion, you know the the, uh, the there everything comes from the outside, but we put it together and it comes out sounding like us. I should clarify that you guys are non-electric, yeah. but the performances can be some of the most electric things around. That's what people tell us, <laughs> and I love to hear it. Yeah, because I I mean I personally a long time ago I had just had this got this idea that my you know. I'm never going to be a show-off musically because I would fail doing that. I don't have um, any kind of, uh, you know, I'm not a wizard when it comes to playing instruments. I play them solidly, I think, um, and I sing strongly, but, I, you know, the, it's not, there's no point in being but so egocentric up there uh, because the the key to the whole thing is getting everybody off, getting everybody in tune with you, you being in tune with everybody else, and then going to another place. And that's what I always 
try to do, and when I, I can tell when it's working, most of the time it does. And, and that's it. It's almost kind of like a shamanic kind of thing that I'm mm-hmm. thinking of while I'm performing. Oh, uh, uh, we got away from it. The The show is March 18th yeah. at, at the Molehill Theater. That's in Alstead on Gilson yeah. Mine Road. For people, some people haven't seen you guys. Some people haven't been to the Molehill. Yeah. As a band, especially as your band in yeah. that place, can you just yeah. speak to that kind of weirdness? Yeah, yes, I would love to. Um, Molehill is a very different kind of place. I mean, it's when we first started playing there, it was still a um, an active machine shop. They actually it was a small shop, but they had all these press machines, these machine press. They made parts for other. They made parts for other parts, is kind of as I describe it. And Dennis Molesky's family for generations, uh, this machine shop where they make parts about for other parts. And uh, he was still, and, and Dennis inherited that, and he kept it running as a machine shop to keep some of his father's employees on for so they could get their full Social Security. Mm-hmm. So they had all these machines all around. And then the, the stage was put up between these two old machines that were probably part of his grandfather's operation, <laughs> really incredible looking things, just giant um, press machines, and a uh, stage in between. Well, Dennis was in the theater, and still is in the theater, and he wanted to put a stage in, he wanted to have a place to perform, and it was a big space. Um, so at first, it was just kind of like a stage in amongst machinery, mm-hmm. uh, but it evolved, um, he's done a lot with it, so that it kind of the machines are still there um they're some, not all of them are still there but a lot of them are still there and it uh somehow they kind of fit like these uh okay. you know heavy heavy sentinels sitting in the background <laughs> but there's a, a a good floor area where seats i don't know maybe 70 80 people and mm-hmm. uh there's just tables and chairs very comfortable he's kind of made it like kind of made it like in a big like a big living living room and a machine shop and uh, people uh, people just love love the place and people musicians love to perform there because yeah. it's especially people bands that are just a little bit different because it's just a little bit different and it's uh, very funky but it's very together too <laughs> and there's room for dancing there is room for dancing. Yes, there is. There is room for dancing. Yeah. Is this uh, most of the shows at Mole Hill are BYOB? This is as well. Yes, I think so. That, I believe that's still in operation. I know they they've been working on, you know, making it be something where they could get a license. But it's, it, at present, I believe it's still still BYOB. Mole Hill Theater for your GPS at seven eight nine Gilsum Mine Road in Alstead, New Hampshire. You can uh, find it on the internet if I've gone too fast. Tickets are cheap. It's it's ten bucks at the door, and it's like you said, a fundraiser. Let's talk about that aspect. Yeah, um, we've got uh, there's a, a permaculture sort of uh, combination of um, of doing it and learning it mm. uh, organization that's that's coming up. Um, and the guys that uh, are friends of ours who run this organization, and it's new, it's kind of new coming up, and they want to get some money together. Uh, they want to run some workshops and uh, get a site set up, a, yeah. a permaculture site. We can do the the real deal. Now, I'm not a permaculturalist myself, though, because I, I haven't studied enough. I think the more I'd study it, the more I'd want to be that. I know I incorporated that because I am a big gardener. But it's more than just gardening, too. It's a way of living in a landscape is what permacultural is, is all about. It's, um, you know, you grow, you grow things, you grow food, and some of that is garden food, and some of it is, like, tree nuts and uh, herbs and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But there might be more involved. There might be planning for um, the contour of the land, planning for microclimates, planning to companion the crops you you have there, planting to, you know, break the wind in a certain area from, you know, it, or creating a certain microclimate. Right. It's a way of just really working with the landscape you have and growing and living. There's It even gets beyond all that. I, that was a great explanation. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had Matthew Connors and, and some of the other folks that are yeah. involved in this org effort in yeah. on the show I don't, a year and a half ago and permaculture can be so encompassing that it gets really hard to talk about it does it's kind of like the coal river ranch yes exactly <laughs> that's why i just think that we fit so well with this because 
I mean, one of the big, big things about permaculture is variety, mm-hmm. you know, and, and um, have a, not a monocropped cropped, uh, environment, but a really rich and diverse environment. So I think that kind of that, that suits us and works with us very well. And uh, also the fact that that's another thing about the Coal River Ranners, too, is we, we like to fit in an environment. Like we go to Mole Hill, sometimes we play on the stage if, that, if occasion demands it, and sometimes we might hire a sound person to do it. I think we have a show coming up in early May where we're going to do that. Um, but uh, for this occasion, uh, we wanted to. We, we just want to fit into the contours of the room where mm-hmm. we can move around. Um, we can find a, a good spot where we can play acoustically and don't need um, the amplification. So we can mm-hmm. find our own little microclimate within a place. Mm-hmm. It's a, something that we're really good at. Like you know, but people hire us. I mean, we can play for a hundred people. That's that's a lot for acoustically for a small band uh, without amplification. That would require everyone listening, but if we get into a place and there's that many people and not everybody's listening, we can move around and set up to, you know, play for just the people who do want to listen. Uh, so that's, that really, we, we're we kind of a permacultural band, I think. <laughs> and permaculture, too, it's, you know, stacking functions, uh, everything does more than one thing, and that, again, loops back around to Cold River Ranters, because it's not, it's not just the music with you people. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, you know, as much as anything, it's community. For we're, we're very community-oriented. That's why we're really attached to Mole Hill, because Mole Hill really belongs to a community. It's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the feeling. Almost everyone who comes out of there will, will tell you that. You know, it's a, it's a place that really fosters community and is open to the community and jives with the community. And that's really what we're about. We do a, we do a fair amount of fundraisers. I mean, we try to make some money here and there, yeah. too. But, uh, you know, we love playing this kind of thing for, you know, a small local group. And Matt's a good friend of ours. Mm-hmm. Marty's a good friend of ours. And uh, we like working with them. We like what they're doing. So we like being a part of that. So it wasn't it wasn't hard to say yes we would like to do this your website uh cold river ranters.com people can uh listen to the entirety of the latest cd watershed before they Mm -hmm. choose to buy it it's not the same as a show no i think that's yeah that's going to be always hard to do i mean we actually worked and we're very proud of this album we worked really hard on it in the studio but um and we did do a lot of the, all the songs. I think there was only one song that was really just kind of tracks. Almost all the songs we did, at least the basic track was all four of us playing at one time. Mm-hmm. And then we did add some stuff. We did add quite a bunch onto that, but we wanted to have that kind of live thing. But you're right, it's not gonna, it's never gonna come off the same. It's, uh, uh, hopefully we're an experience as much as a, yeah. as a music show or an experience. And, and that's uh, not that's not to diminish the recording. Uh, for a lot of bands, and, and I suspect it's true for you guys, they they really are meant to accomplish kind of complementary but separate things. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean. We work hard. We're like I say, we're all songwriters, and I'm I'm, I'm actually got the album in front of me, and I think there's only two traditional songs on the whole album, which is it's it's kind of interesting the way we've gone there because I've you know in the beginning we were playing mostly traditional music, but then again, if you pull out any one song like Cousin de la Montaña, that's you know that is a it is a, a cumbia. It's a, that's a type of of um, Latin American. Uh, rhythm and dance form, mm-hmm. and uh, this that that tune. Even though Merrick Bennett wrote that, it, it fits that. Merrick's traveled quite a bit in Nicaragua, mm-hmm. and um, so he was inspired by that to do that. And then if you do La Lara Day du Soleil Brillant, that translates to mean the Lara Day of of the loud sun. Mm-hmm. People look at it and say, do you mean to do you mean to did you mean to say Brillant Soleil like? Uh, you know, the brilliant sun? No, no, it's a loud sun because we recorded this in Loud Sun Studio and we had like such a oh, great yeah. a great time there that uh, I just kind of... I, the song it was kind of around, I finished it off, and uh, Ben Rogers, who recorded it, I kind of uh, did that in honor of him. But that's but that song is a lot of day, which is a Breton dance form. You know, you get in a big circle and move around and you have a... There's some movements and the song fits that right there. So, yeah, is that traditional or did i write it well mm-hmm. hopefully i'm the composer of that tune but i composed it for the for the dance medium so 
Yeah, that's that's us. What can you tell me about the ancient proverb inside the jacket? <laughs> ancient proverb. I think uh, I think we just kind of all okay. Uh, we decided we all contributed to that, and it was all kind of chopped up. We figured, okay, that's this is us, okay, right? Because it's all kind of chopped up from the words mm-hmm. in our songs here. And, you know, it's a kind of a hodgepodge, but somehow it ends up making a statement. I guess kind of a poetic, out there kind of <laughs> statement, but it ends up doing that, I think. <laughs> Would you be willing to give a dramatic reading of it? Okay, here we go. Let me, let me try that. Time is the source of all our troubles. Love is a wise bloodhound. You ought to be a mountain. They got a machine turning round the river. Round and round, the words go round. I love the cool, clear water. See that sea level rising? Though I had no good reason, I went up on the mountain. Won't you all come visit me? Now that somehow makes a little sense. <laughs> yeah, a little sense anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it touches on, on certain things. Love, wisdom, sea levels rising, uh, visiting. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you if you dissect all of our lyrics, um, what you're going to find is that, yeah, some of them seem like, okay, what exactly does that mean? Some of them are definitely aimed at meaning something for sure. But some of them are just kind of, okay, like, um, okay, um, trying to think of Roscoe and the devil, you know, exactly what does all that stuff mean? Well, I, I kind of write to, the, to emotions. That's what I like to write to, so... Mm-hmm. Things can speak to emotions without necessarily making a logical sense. But you're not going to see me like speaking to a lot of emotions of violence or of hatred or of racism, unless I'm, you know, speaking against those things, even emotionally. Uh, so, yeah, you might, what do those words mean? Well, yeah, you pull out some really good words there, and you're not going to, there's a lot of words you're not going to find you know, at least in any kind of um, oh, profession sense. Hmm. Yeah. We're talking with Tom Jawbone from Cold River Ranters. They're going to be playing March 18th at Molehill Theater, 7 p.m. to 10, 11, something like that. Yep. And it's a fundraiser for an upstart permaculture folk. Yep. There, there's a symbiosis that we've been talking about between the Cold River Ranters and permaculture, the, the, the whole jive spirit, the values, principles, it's earth care and people care and fair share. It's all baked in. All of it goes together so well. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I think so. I think it does. And, uh, you know, I think there's also that kind of flexibility angle, you know. Mm-hmm. We go a lot of different places depending on where our audience wants to go with us, and that's that's kind of like with permaculture. You go with what the land is dictating and talking. How the land talks to you, you respond to that. Mm. Do you, are, are you sick of talking about the uh, stupid jawbone? <laughs> no, no, no. I love talking about the jawbone. <laughs> talk we about actually have, you know, this is, I, I was shocked, and I've always been everybody's best favorite jawbone player. Everybody's, they will <laughs> tell me I'm the best jawbone player they ever heard because, of course, I'm probably the only one. And then I get into a band with another jawbone player, a better jawbone player. Actually, Merrick Bennett's a better. He plays the jawbone the real way. I've been playing jawbone for, oh, gosh, what, maybe 35 years or something like that. And it started, I was at a jam, or there was a jam happening at my house, rather. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it just kind of it was my roommate. This is down in Virginia. And... Um, there was a, a friend, another friend on a on a back step had just left the jawbone out on the step. Now, I knew that jawbones were played. I'd read that by um, oh by African Americans in this country mm-hmm. anyway, and probably all over. And then there are also jawbones are played in Latin America, all over the world. Well, I had no idea how to play a jawbone, but I really wanted to join this jam. And the best thing was going to be to grab that jawbone, and go out and play. And it just <laughs> dawned on me to go into the uh, silverware uh, drawer and find something to beat on. And so 
I came up with a table knife. And it was kind of probably, probably fortuitous that the table knife that I chose sounded pretty good uh, <laughs> because it's, most of them don't. And if I had had a bad sounding table knife, I probably would have thought, well, you know, I might have given up on that idea. I never played the jawbone, but had a good time just kind of whacking on the jawbone that night. Uh, but like I say, Merrick Bennett, now he plays, there's a, there's a Latin American style. You play donkey jawbones. So the jawbones I play are like horse and cow jawbones, and the teeth are kind of held in by old, uh, old meat from around the gums, kind of. <laughs> but with the donkeys, you clean them all out, and they're loose, and they kind of they rattle along, and there's a particular rhythms that you play. I'm, I'm just kind of a, you know, pick it up and do it guy and see what happens. But Merrick, is, uh, he studied those rhythms, and it's really good. The way he plays is really, really amazing. So we have two jawbone players in the band. But I just, I just got the name Tom Jawbone. That, uh, that just stuck to me. I actually added the Tom because when I, down in, when I w- what I did after I, I went to, I, I lived in North Carolina for a while in Durham, North Carolina, and there was an amazing uh, music scene down there in the '80s. It was kind of the the, the Haight Ashbury that nobody knows of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a big, big arts community altogether. But there was a traditional music was really big. A lot of we would have big jams, 30, 40 people playing or whatever. And I played the Jawbone, and I, everybody just called me Jawbone. A lot of people didn't even know that I, I had another name. I was just <laughs> Jawbone. And, but I, I kind of wanted to get the Tom back in there, so I started telling everybody I was Tom Jawbone. So that's, how, that's where the name comes from anyway. What else needs to be said? Oh, gosh, you know, um, expect celebration this time around. We're going to celebrate, um, you know, permaculture. And we do it in a lively kind of way. We've uh, we've all gone through the elections, and I don't think anybody in the band liked the outcome of the election. And uh, we've um, you know we're all kind of writing in that kind of vein a little bit now too. But we're we're going to be pulling out our celebration music and having a really good time at the at the, at the, per, at the permaculture gallery. I want to go out on this segment with a couple of songs from that disc. I've already played. We're all in it together. Which which two would you pick out as good representations of the style and the philosophy? Or three if you want. Okay. Uh let's see. Well you got you got one of Merrick's songs there. Um and uh so let's uh, the couple of other ones. Um let's see. For Eric Walker, any you know, he doesn't have enough songs on this album. Mm. But the Barn song is my favorite song on the whole album. Uh, that that Eric sings, and uh, it's a song that he wrote, and it's just a gorgeous song. And uh, so I would choose that one. And then let's see if you want one from me. Well, let's just throw in the La Rade de Soleil, Soleil Brouillon in Maiden's Lane. That's a, a Breton style tune that I wrote, and then a traditional English dance song. Um, that would be a couple. Oh, and then if you just want to throw some of the general uh, Coal River craziness, Crow Black Chicken, which is a traditional song probably from louisiana back in the early um, 20th century um, you could toss that one in i'm going to do that i want to thank you for um supporting the things that you support sure well one of them is wool radio oh. this is the third show of the three different jocks that i've talked to and been <laughs> on and i've always enjoyed that and loved it i, I, yeah. I think the band was on jeff's show Jeff show, yep, yes, and then I have been on, I've been interviewed. I had actually like four shows on the Mystery Train where I talked about oh, the yeah. songs that changed my life. So, Etienne is Etienne cool. Etienne is uh, Etienne was great. He, uh, that was we had a good time. We spent uh, I don't know four hours or something like that yep. re- doing that. So yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to. I be love in. Wolf. <laughs> He's going to be in in about 10 minutes to run his show, Mystery Train. Comes All right. Right, at, right after mine at 9 o'clock. Everybody should, I'm actually going to be on ATN's show again. I'm, on a new, I'm working on a new project, that, uh, which is a, a project of mostly songs that I've written. It's a celebration of, of the marriage to my wife, who's also mm-hmm. in the Cold River Anders, mm-hmm. Anita Carol Weldon. And, uh, so, and we're going we're gonna to... Be on there with Anita and I are going to be on a ten show talking about that project. We're going to play some early cuts before they're finished and describe mm-hmm. the pro- the process and the progress and uh, work it out to the end on that on the show too. Outstanding! I'm looking forward to listening to that. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thank you so much. Mark, thank you so much. Take good care now. You too. Bye bye. All right. I can't stress enough how much how much fun 
it is to see this band. I'm going to go ahead and play, what did he say, a barn song, and then we're going to follow it with the one that I can't pronounce, Lurie de Loudson. You ought to be an island Palm trees for your clothes I'd roll out and sleep on you When I'm in need of some repose You ought to be an island You ought to be a chestnut tree Or a willow by the brook I'd climb up in your branches Read an ancient book Just an old barn Full of useful things Watching as the spring turns into summer Into autumn Into winter Into spring Into summer Into autumn Into winter Into spring Into summer Summer, I let's stay right here in the summer with me, baby. Lord, cause it's summertime and the living is easy and the fishing jump. Cotton's high and your daddy reaching your mama's so good.
Planters too from their CD uh, Watershed. Etienne has come in. We talked about him, the guy, and he came strolling. And we've got about uh, three minutes before the top of the hour. Cold River Ranters are going to be playing March 18th at Mole Hill Theater on Gilson Mine Road in Alstead, New Hampshire. Uh, blood and Guts vocal stylings, uh, American Rootsy feel, dashes of third world seasonings, uh, a lot of energy. Uh, Ten bucks at the door, and it all goes to support permaculture education efforts in our region. Going to go out in the last couple of minutes with uh, Crow Black Chicken. And Etienne will be back. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Monsters and Hamsters for another week. Be back next time. Chicken pie. The hardest work I ever done is plowing a field of rice. The easiest work I ever done is eating chicken pie. Crow black chicken, crow for day, crow black chicken and flowery. Crow black chicken. I like chicken pie. Chicken crow for day. Along come a owl, Lord have mercy, stole my chicken away. Crow black chicken, crow for day, crow black chicken and flower. Crow black chicken. I like chicken Chickens fly.